an artist. Today we are going to add some color to our sun and moon pictures that we started last week. We're going to use warm colors on the sun side and cool colors on the other side. Now we're going to use an interesting and maybe a little bit different painting technique than you've done before that uses markers. So if you look at the color wheel right behind me, you can see the warm colors, colors that remind you of fire. They are on one side of the color wheel and the cool colors things that remind you of water and cold things are on the other side of the picture so what you will need today are, is your picture from last time and some markers now if you're at home and you don't have markers you can do the same thing with crayon just color everything in with the warm or the cool colors just the same way we're doing um, the painting technique with the markers all right so let's get started all right, so I've got my picture here that we made last time, and I have, uh, I'm gonna start on the sunny side of my picture, um, which happens to be on the right side for me, but if it's on the left, it doesn't really matter which side. What you wanna do um, is think of the colors that remind you of fire. So the three main warm colors are red, orange, and yellow. Um, they're on the color wheel. I also like to include pink in this group because pink is really just a lighter version of red. If you don't want to use pink, that's fine. Just use these three colors. It will work great. So choose one of them, and it doesn't matter to me which one you start with, but you are going to use that marker to add lines. I like to do the sun rays first. Um, I like to make make each part of this a little bit different and so maybe in this one I will do diagonal lines I think about the different lines that I know I'm gonna crisscross my lines I like that um, you can also use shapes so if you would like to do um, spots of colors little circles now I don't usually color in very many things I am doing it with a yellow sometimes Yellow is the lightest of the three warm colors, and if you're, uh, if you're not careful, sometimes it almost disappears once we get it wet. Remember, uh, when you're using a marker, put the marker cap on the back. Um, that way you don't lose your markers. All right, how about some curvy lines? You can make up your own. You don't have to copy the same as mine. You can do a combination. Maybe I'll do a pattern where I do a color in between and see what happens. Maybe it will look a little different. Um, you can use, ooh, I think spirals might be kind of fun. I love spirals. Choose things that you know how to draw and that you enjoy drawing to do yours. All I'm asking is that you don't use numbers or letters to do your designs. So you can come up with as many different things as you like. How about some hearts? I like hearts. Maybe have hearts on the sides just so we get some more color. The more um, things that you put in each space, the more ink you are putting on your paper, the brighter the colors will look in the end. I need some more yellow ones. So let's do some horizontal lines like this some stripes that looks nice and maybe in this space I will do broken lines once you get the sun rays all done then you can go ahead and start doing the face now remember you're only doing the sunny side of the face the moon side of the face we will be using cool colors so I start by outlining next to my crayon I like a nice thick line. If you use the tip, you'll end up with a really skinny line and then your colors won't spread very much when we get them wet. So I'm gonna use a nice thick line. I'm gonna go on each side of the mouth, maybe even around the cheek with that, around the eye. I know it looks really strange right now, but once we get this wet, it's going to do something cool. Just to add a little bit more ink, I'm gonna, I'm going to do some stripes on my face. I'm doing curved stripes, but if you'd like to do straight stripes or horizontal, vertical, I don't, it doesn't really matter. I just want some lines in here. I don't want to color the whole thing. First of all, that's going to take too long. Second of all, you don't need to. You'll see why here in just a minute. I think I should add some color to the eye. How about a yellow eye? 
can't do blue because blue is a cool color and maybe a pink cheek. All right. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take some water. I've used this before, so it's a little dirty. You probably should get some clean water um, and a paintbrush. Now, if you're, you don't have a paintbrush and you're doing this at home, try using a cotton swab like a Q-tip or something else. And I am just going to get this little area wet. Just use the tip of my brush and let it touch the marker. I'm going to try to keep this color inside this area. Now I like to skip. I'm going to skip this area right now so that it has a chance to dry. And then I'll do the next space. Sometimes if you're having trouble keeping your color inside the area, the crayon's going to help you a little bit with that because it will resist Crayon is made from wax, and well, our water is made from water. And when you get the two uh, rant, crayons and water, I'm going to take and I'm going to do all the spaces. But notice I'm kind of doing it in a pattern where I skip one and then do another one. For those of you who are trying this with a Q-tip, I'll show you how that works too. You might end up needing more than one, but you can add. You do the same thing with a Q-tip. Spread it around. Now, if it's still giving you trouble and you're having trouble staying in your lines, um, one thing that helps me keep them a little, control it a little more, a couple things. First of all, don't let there be too much water on your paper. If you see a puddle, spread it around or soak it up. And if you need to soak it up, wipe your brush off and then take your brush and, and just let it, it's a little thirsty then, so it will drink up that extra water. The other thing sometimes I like to do, I'm going to go back up here now, um, is outline where I'm going to paint first, and then it's just easy to st a little bit easier to stay inside because all I have to do is paint in the middle. So work on controlling your paintbrush or your Q-tip so that you end up with nice looking colors and it's not just all mixed together when you're finished. If your brush is too dry, the paint or the ink won't spread around either. So if you have too dry of a brush, I'll show you what that looks like. You'll start to hear that scratchy sound and it's starting not to spread. Some people just try pushing harder, that doesn't work. All that does is ruin your paintbrush. So what you need to do is just dip it again and get right up to the edges. You don't wanna leave that part empty. All right, one more space here. Ooh, I didn't have my brush completely rinsed off there and it mixed and made, had a little orange left over and it made a yellow orange color. I like that, that's kind of a happy little accident. All right, so now I'm gonna do the face. I'm gonna go around the outside first. It's okay to paint right over that smile. It won't hurt it at all. I'm gonna go around the outside of the curve part. And then I'm just gonna start filling it in. Careful of the eye and the cheek if you have it. Uh-oh, do you hear it? It's getting real noisy and it stopped painting. That means I need new paint. Try to get this whole side filled in. This is a good time after you get the sun painted. Oops, I gotta do the eyes. After you get the sun all painted, this would be a great time to stop and take a break. Uh, the reason you want to stop and take a break right now is to let this side all dry before we start doing the cool colors. Um, if you go right into doing the cool colors with water, it will uh, probably end up mixing some of these colors over. So right now, we're gonna stop for the day and just let it dry. Minute.